What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to talk about that thing we all love to do, aquarium maintenance. We're gonna go through a whole water change, including a complete tank cleaning from start to finish. You ready? Let's go. Welcome back to Caveman Aquatics guys. I'm Kev and today we're gonna to be doing a full tank cleaning, including an 80% water change on this bad boy right here. So I like to make a lot of helpful aquarium videos. I've helped a bunch of guys get started in the hobby. So if you're into aquariums, consider subscribing. Take a look around the channel after this video and maybe you'll find something else you like. You never know. So the first thing I'm gonna do guys is turn off my heaters and turn off my filters. The reason why I turn off the filters is while I'm taking the decor out of the tank to get it ready for cleaning, I don't want any of the debris that's stuck in the rocks to get stirred up and then suck into the filters. That's their job when I'm not cleaning it. But when I'm doing the cleaning, I don't want any more debris getting sucked into my filters. I wanna get all that debris out myself. The reason why I turn the heaters off is kinda obvious. If the heaters aren't submerged, they could cause damage to the heaters, so we wanna turn them off before anything else. At this point, I've taken my canopy off already. I'm removing the lights from the top and then removing the glass on top of the tank just to get access to all the decor inside. As you can see, the fish already know something's up and they don't like it. Next thing I wanna do is get my decor out of the way. I only got these two big pieces of rock so it's fairly easy to get them out. I just wanna make sure that there's no fish stuck to it or stuck inside of it. I have found my pleco inside hiding there once or twice before. Now that the decor is out of the way, I like to start cleaning the inside of the glass, getting all that built up film and algae, get it out of the way now. Since the algae is pretty hard to see up close when you're cleaning the tank, you can't really tell where it is exactly, so you just want to make sure that you cover all of the surface area on the glass. If you notice, I also have that magnetic algae scrubber on the side there. I don't like to use that too much because if sand or gravel gets stuck in between the magnets, you end up finding some scratches on your glass. So I just keep it there as a worst case scenario type of thing. Now I'm going to go ahead and start vacuuming the sand. I've got my siphon tube and a hose and a bucket and basically I'm just going to cover all the square footage around the bottom of the tank and get as much detritus as I can out. When it comes to vacuuming sand, it's not quite the same as gravel. With gravel, you just want to push your siphon tube all the way down to the bottom of the tank and it'll suck all the dirt up. But with sand, most of your detritus tends to lay on the surface of the sand. So you kind of want to just brush the surface of the sand. You will suck up some particles of sand. It's just part of the process, but that's okay. What's more important is that you get up all those pieces of debris, detritus, uneaten fish food, fish waste. You gotta get it all out of the tank. These are the things that are causing your tank to have high nitrates every week. As long as you get most of them out of your tank and put new water in, your nitrate levels will come down and your fish will be happy. After a full pass from left to right with the siphon tube, I'm never satisfied, so I always go back and just try to find little pieces that I missed. Now that your substrate is vacuumed, it's time to start getting some of this water out. Now I used to use a python for this process, but I found that connecting the python to your sink and having your sink on and running the whole time to create the siphon, that's a big waste of water. So what I recently changed to is this pump that I'm using. The pump goes right into your tank and the other end goes right into your bathroom right down the drain. Not only does it work much faster, more efficient, but it also saves a lot of water. This is a cheap 20 or $30 pump that I found on Amazon. It works great and it gets the job done. I'll put a link in the description so you can check it out. Now while this water is draining out, I like to wipe down my inlet and outlet tubes. Just clean them up a little bit, get all that gunk off of them. Let it fall right into the tank water as all this water is getting out of there anyway. This is the best time to get it done. What I'm doing now is just spreading out the substrate, just evening it out. These guys love to redecorate and make mountains and hills and I always come in afterwards and put everything back the way I want it because I'm the boss, but they'll eventually get it back how they want it anyway.
Right now what you see me doing, I'm just kind of looking at every fish, making sure nobody's overly stressed out, making sure everybody's still doing okay. This is a big water change. So while this water is draining, let me talk to you a little bit about why and how I do an 80% water change. With time, I figured out that my fish can handle an 80% water change. I didn't start with an 80% water change. At first I started with 20%, then I upgraded to 35%, 50%. I eventually got down to 80 because I realized that the fish can handle it. They're not overly stressed out. This is my process of getting to 80% and making sure that the fish are gonna be okay. Now there's a common myth in the fish keeping hobby. I won't say myth, I'll say a common misconception. Beneficial bacteria does not grow or live or swim in your water column. Beneficial bacteria only grow on surface area. They'll grow on your glass, they grow on your decor, they grow on your substrate, they grow inside your filter media, in your bio media, but they do not live in the water column. So there is no fear of taking out too much water and eliminating beneficial bacteria. That's not how it works. There is no fear in losing beneficial bacteria because you took too much water out. The fear of taking too much water out is overly stressing out your fish. As long as you're aware that your fish aren't stressed out, you're keeping an eye on them and watching them, then the more water you take out, the better, because you're gonna drastically lower the nitrate levels. Now, with that being said, the water that you're replacing back into your tank, when you do a big water change like 80%, you've gotta make sure that those water parameters are identical to the water that was in here prior. Identical meaning the pH level is the same, the temperature is the same. The, there should be no ammonia in it. There should be no nitrite in it. But as long as your water parameters are the same and you're not going to shock your fish with this very different water that you're adding in, then your fish are gonna be okay. So in my opinion, I would suggest that you experiment a little bit with how much water you can take out during your water change and see how much your fish can handle, how stressful they look, how do they react when you're taking more water out. If they're doing fine and they look fine as you take more water out, I suggest take as much water out as you possibly can. As long as you're replacing it with water that has equal parameters as the water that you took out. Here we are guys at 80%. Fish look like they're doing okay, but we're gonna start refilling this tank. There's a few things we gotta cover before putting water into this tank. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get the decor in and give these guys some of their hiding places back real quick. Here are the products that I use during every water change, guys. I make sure to always add Cichlid Lake Salt, obviously some Prime, Cichlid Trace, and Stress Guard. I'm gonna go through step by step which ones I add first, what order, and why. So hopefully we all know why we use Prime, but I'll touch on it real quick just in case there's any beginners watching. Prime is a dechlorinator, and you must dechlorinate your tap water before adding it to your tank. Chlorine will kill your fish. Chlorine will kill your beneficial bacteria. Chlorine is gonna kill anything that's alive inside your tank. So Prime is great to dechlorinate your water. Prime is also going to detoxify any ammonia in your, in your water. Ammonia is also very bad for fish. So the first thing that goes into the tank is the Prime, just before adding the tap water. Now as you see the water start to refill the tank, let's talk about those water parameters. I've got a thermostat on my tap making sure that the temperature of this water is exactly the same as the temperature in the tank. Additionally, I use crushed coral and aragonite sand as a substrate. I also have a bag of crushed coral in my filter. What this does is the crushed coral and the aragonite sand buffer my water and raise the pH to the required pH for African cichlids. As this new tap water enters my tank, it's immediately being buffered by the crushed coral and the aragonite sand putting the pH levels to the exact same as the water that was taken out. I've tested my pH levels before the water change and immediately after the water change to confirm this. At this point, I like to add the stress guard. Now stress guard is gonna do just that, guard their stress. It's gonna help reduce their stress levels, kinda calm them down and settle into this new environment.
Next thing you'll see me add is the cichlid trace. And I'm gonna read this stuff right off the bottom. Cichlid trace supplies a broad range of trace elements demonstrated to be necessary for proper fish health and growth. Now don't take my word for it. Go to Google, go to Amazon, read the reviews, read the description, and you'll see that this stuff is super beneficial for your African cichlids. I also like to add cichlid lake salt to the tank. This has very similar elements as the trace, but some are missing. So I just add both and make sure I get the best of both worlds. Now granted, these two products are for African cichlid keeping. If you don't keep African cichlids, obviously you don't need these cichlid products. Now the lake salt does tend to clump up a bit if it's not dissolved properly. So what I do is that I put it in the back of the tank towards the wave makers. And as the water rises and goes over the wave maker, I turn them on right away and get all that water movement going. So now that we got the tank refilled, I'm gonna go ahead and plug my heaters back in. I'm gonna plug my filters back in, get them going. I'm gonna put my covers on, including my lights and my canopy, and just clean up around the outside of the tank. Now, once I'm done with that, I do like to just leave the lights off for a while, just to maintain the calmness in the tank. Things get different, the decor moved a little bit, so people are gonna be fighting for some new territory. So I just like to keep the lights out, make sure everybody's nice and calm and cool. I'll leave it like this for about an hour or so and then I'll come back and show you guys what the tank looks like after everything settles down. So that's your whole tank cleaning from beginning to end, including an 80% water change. But hold on, before you go, let me know if you like my shirt. There's plenty more over at Caveman Merch. I'll put a link in the description below. Plenty of original designs for you guys to choose from. Don't forget to like this video and consider subscribing so you don't miss any new content. After you do that, make sure you watch one of these other cool videos. See you on the next one.